and sit down. Oh, hello and welcome to North Wales Side by Side. It's Saturday night, the 12th of August, and you find me on yet another road trip. Not as long as this time. I'm heading down to Oswest Street to go and have a look at a potential product uh, project for the channel. Now the Suzuki's gone, I need another vehicle as a project vehicle for the channel. So I've been looking for quite a while now. Um, I think I've decided on what we're going to get for the channel and I'm going down to have a look at one now. Have you guessed what it is yet? Just picked her up and I'm making my way back from Oswald Street, heading back to Colwyn Bay and we're in the project car. What a lovely day to go and pick a convertible car up. It is absolutely lagging it down. Good test for the roof. At least I know if the roof leaks or not. Well, I don't know if you can see that. The guy did warn me. Occasionally, the engine management light comes on. But he says it's done that ever since he owned the car and they've never been able to find the fault. Because every time they plug it into a scanner, it goes off. So, whilst it's on, I'm going to pull over, get the scanner out, because I bought it with me. And let's see if I can figure out, at the side of the road, why the engine management lights come on. Well, it's come up with a history code and a current code. And I've got P0125. Insufficient coolant temperature for closed loop fuel control. I am now going to reveal the project car. Mark 3. 2001 MR2 Roadster and we're going to have a run round some lanes and then I'm going to work my way home and I'm going to go put her back in the workshop because I've got things to do tonight and I need to start getting ready for tonight so anyhow thanks for watching enjoy the drive
Oh no, somebody's committed the cardinal sin. They put Bosch plugs in a Japanese car. Don't do that, people. Is anybody interested to see what the inside of this engine looks like? If I get an endoscope out, let's do that. Whilst we've got access to the plug holes, let me get the boroscope. I'm going to use a boroscope and I'm going down the cylinders. It's got a little light on it, so let's see what we can see. We straighten that out. That's the top of the piston. That, that's number one. That looks really good. Just leave that there. Let's just switch. You might just be able to make out the still cross hatching on the bore. That's number one. That's in good condition. That's the top of the piston again. This piston's a little bit higher up than the other one. Mark would be good condition. Number three. This one's really high up as well. Yeah, they're really good. Number four. This one should be a bit further down. No, it's not. There we go. All them pistons look absolutely amazing. We have ourselves what looks like a very, very healthy engine. Both of the babies uh, parked together now. The GR and the MR2. And I'm changing the oil and the filter. Now I've got all the engine codes sorted out and we've got rid of the pre-cats. With the mixtures being way, way too rich, some oil will have been contaminated by unburnt fuel it's getting a fully synthetic 540 we'll go with that and we're using for an oil filter ADT32109 that's ADL blueprint these are really good quality components
probably see the oil light. Tops up. Whoops, that was me. I didn't take very long to go out.
finally got the manifold off. I'll tell you what, that was a tight fit. So that is what you'll find. On an MR2. We got one stainless steel exhaust manifold, two brand new lambda sensors, and a genuine Toyota manifold gasket. Even though the kit comes with. I'd rather use a genuine on the head. Oh, it comes with new studs and everything. That is very, very nice. That was so much easier to fit than the old manifold. With all new hardware, all the studs, everything's lined up. Well, we've got the exhaust manifold fitted. It's fitted to the engine and the downpipe. It was a lot easier to put this one in than it was to take the old one out. Two new O2 sensors. These are both brand new. I've just checked it for exhaust leaks, there isn't any. Genuine Toyota gasket there, generic down there, because I couldn't get the two rings that Toyota use. I've had to use a one-piece gasket.
And we are at the moment looking at the engine compartment on Project MR2, which is absolutely filthy. It's covered in dust. But that's by the by. I've had more parts to turn up today for the MR2. This lot. And tonight, we're with Project Padfoot, my MR2. What you see on the floor here is my fuel tank. Right, this is the uh, mess I've left myself in. No handbrake cables on the car. Fuel pump had to come out of the tank because I couldn't get that cable off or that pipe off. Can't, can't get the clip on done, so it made more sense just to lift the, the pump. I can give it a good clean. I've got new bolts for it. We've identified.
quick update on Project Padfoot. We've now got all the uh, suspension links back onto the new cross member. The new anti-roll bar links. And we've also got the anti-roll bar back on with poly bushes. All poly bushed up, all nice and clean. There's a better link, better look at the uh, anti roll bar drop links. I'm just addressing the small little rust bubble I had from a previous repair. So I've just taken all of the lip of the arch, all the way round, down to bare metal, taken probably about an inch down to bare metal, feathered it all in, quickly masked it off, laid some high build primer on it. I'm now going to pull the primer, I'm just going to give it one more coat of primer and then I'm pulling all the masking tape off. And then I'm going to flat it with 800 paper just to blend it back into the original paintwork. And then I'm going to put a coat of Astral Black 202, I think the paint code is. I'm only going to rattle can it. Yeah, Toyota Astral Black is the colour of this car.
Oh, hello, welcome to another Wales Side by Side video. And once again with Padfoot, Project MR2. In a previous video, we did the two suspension arms that you can see on the floor there, plus the other suspension arm that holds the hub to the chassis over there. But when I came to do the driver's side, I found a load of corrosion on the cross member. So I'm now in the process of removing the cross member because I'm going to put a brand new cross member on to Project Padfoot. Because I've got two choices I either take this cross member off and repair it. But I don't think it's going to work because it's previously been repaired. Up there, there is a previous repair and a lot of corrosion, and it's too close to the links. So I'm not happy with the cross member. So that's coming off and getting replaced. So I've left where I'm up to now is the whole suspension is off on the back. Anything that connects to the cross member, other than the engine mount, which is there, or I should say gearbox mount, which I'm now going to crack because I've got the gearbox supported. I'm going to take the mount off and then start on the four bolts that hold the cross member off and drop the cross member. The cross member, all this is unsighted when it's on the car. There's a big hole in the cross member there. There's another one there. That's the side I'd already rebuilt. Somebody's repaired it on the car here. That's so thin, it's burst out. And then we've got this very, very bad repair underneath that you couldn't see when the arms were on. So that's condemned to the scrap. There we go. Documented proof. Project Pad for my MR2 project has a brand new cross member. Right, this is my preferred rust and corrosion protection chemical. This is called Lanagard. There's five litres there. I will not use that entire container with this car. I've got different nozzles. That one is a fan. So that covers big areas. That one is a spot nozzle. That just sprays a stream. That's another type of spot nozzle I use. And this is a pipe that fastens onto my pressure gun with a 360 degree nozzle on the end. I can put that down the sills, inside any box sections, anything. And I can spray the chemical in whilst drawing the tube back out. My bottle holds two litres. And this is a, a pressure bottle. It's much easier to use a pressure bottle than it is to use a trigger bottle. So all I've got to do is lob that down the inside of a, a box section Pull and squeeze that trigger. And the chemical's released. And it gets full coverage. The stuff is brilliant. If I put a little bit of chemical in there now, I'll quickly show you me doing a box section and you'll get the idea. It's really, really simple. Right, I'm just going to show you an example of 
how I'm going to go about protecting the inside of say a box section and I'm going to show you on the rear cross member there's a hole there where the screwdriver is this section is hollow so I'm just going to grab my gun and I'm going to send the pipe into the box section I've pumped the gun up and it's already running out I've already got chemical going into this and I can go up there see it's pouring out everywhere I'm going to get really really a, a good protected car it's going to be amazing and it just comes out as a fine mist that's all you need, nothing more, that's it everything, you nail everything with this stuff and I'm just going to go and do the entire car with that chemical that is my preferred rust treatment system because it's under pressure it gets everything the stuff is absolutely brilliant let me just do a, another section down there just to show you It's that simple that'll set now in the next 24 hours and uh, it'll be ready to go out on the road but I, I, I need to do the rest of the car but I just wanted to give you an example of how you do this job when I do the whole car I'm gonna time lapse it for you and I'll show you the entire process it is my trusted chemical for this process I won't use anything else I use it in the business the stuff is brilliant I absolutely love this stuff I've had really really good results with it over a long long period I won't use anything else I won't use wax oil anymore I don't like under seal on cars because when it chips the water gets underneath it and then the corrosion goes under the under seal before you know it you've got no metal because it's eating all the metal under the under seal this creates a chemical barrier between the metal and the outside world it is a treatment you do once a year on the exposed components box sections and things like that I'll only do them once every two years the rest of the car all the underneath the wheel arches all that kind of stuff gets done once a year high impact areas you might do them just do a touch up after you've washed the car up after a winter but once it's protected it's protected for the entire winter wash all the crap off it and uh, you you won't have any any corrosion afterwards what corrosion you've got on the car that you've covered won't get any worse 
because you create a chemical barrier between the outside world, the salts and all the other stuff that they uh, put on the roads. This stuff is just brilliant. That's all you need. Once a year, just bang it on. It's not cheap, but it's cheaper than doing a load of welding to your car. That's all I'm going to say on that subject. Much easier than spending hours and hours welding. Protect it whilst you can. And uh, it'll see you through for a good few years. Hey, thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to a North Wales side by side video. Once again, I am with the hydraulic handbrake conversion in my MR2. And we've got the master cylinder now plumbed. We've got that's the feed pipe that comes from the ABS block, and that's the pipe that goes to the original pipework back to the rear brakes. Haven't finalised the fastening of the brake pipes yet, but they're all in, they're all plumbed, and they do disappear down the side of the tunnel, and they disappear into the abyss and go through the firewall. I do need to put a rubber bong in because the two pipes pop out down there so what we've got on the ABS block is the feed and it's done with two pipes coming out what would have been the left and right feeds to the rear brakes from the ABS block into a T-piece going down this pipe which is the feed to the master cylinder and then the other pipe that comes from the master cylinder comes up to this t-piece here and then loops to one rear brake feed and the other one loops to the other rear brake feed so that's the circuit <laughs> Thank you. 
MO2 is going for its MOT tomorrow. So I need to go through all the electrics, all the lights, and make sure everything is working. Because I don't want to be embarrassed tomorrow and find out I've got a blown bulb. I've just thrown the uh, half finished centre console back into the car. It's absolutely covered in dust. I've got the, the shape now I want. Ready to start trimming it, but the material for trimming it hasn't yet arrived. I'm going to trim the entire centre console in like um, a leatherette material in black to match the seats. So I'm just waiting for the sponge to turn up, which will get glued onto it. And then the material will get glued onto the sponge. So that'll, that'll finish the centre console off. I've started rubbing the centre console down, but I need to put it back in for the MOT tomorrow. So let's at least do the lights. It's in the power of the gods now. We know we've got new wishbones on the front with brand new poly bushes. I've got new discs, pads, calipers have been rebuilt on the entire front of the car. It's had new track rod ends. It's had all the rear suspension rebuilt, rebushed adjustable toe arms again it's been poly bushed it's got brand new anti roll bar links on it brand new anti roll bar bushes front and rear brand new rear cross member brand new exhaust manifold with new gaskets that don't leak the whole underneath of the car has been stripped repainted and Cavity, the whole car's been cavity waxed, it's been lanyard guarded underneath. I went underneath it on Thursday and checked all the bolts on the suspension, they're all tight. So I can't really do any more. I've done all the MOT preparation I can possibly do. Just take it to the MOT station tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And there's no reason why I shouldn't get another 12 months MOT on this car tomorrow. Anyhow, thanks for watching. I thought I'd just bring you up to date where I am. And then she's all legal for the summer. Thanks for watching. An update on Project Padfoot, my MR2. How off did you get that with an MR2? Totally clean MOT with not one single advisory. A nice clean MOT. Can't say fairer than that.
well done Padfoot. All that work was worth it. And sit down.